Hello everybody and welcome once again to Galactic Science 2. In today's episode, what I'd like to do is first of all start off by repairing this leather armour because my my uh, A2 system is getting full of leathery armoury bits and I don't want that. So let's start with that one today. The machine casings did eventually get made and I've got the 16 in here and the antimony ingots but we also need to make... Um, something else which I think we can now do and that was the so look at what we got to do for the machine casing I need the reinforced machine casing don't I it's casing so this is all we actually got to working on next so we need four of these plus that plus this data storage unit so the basic circuit board we're going to need how many of those we're going to need four per and we're going to have to make four of these I think for one of these Yes, we are. So we're going to have to have 16 of those basic circuits. And these things here. And the recipe for that is actually not too bad. So it's 32 blocks of iron plus an adva eight advanced circuits. Reasonably expensive, but we should be able to do that. So we've got two, so we need another 14. So let's start crafting those. If we can, that is... Yeah, we've got available enough, so that'll just go through. And that should go through the assembly machine. They're just mis assembly machine recipes. So we'll look what's actually being crafted at the moment. In fact, yeah, that seems to be too not too bad. Yes, it's making more circuits. They won't get made, of course, because the uh, scrap will be t mahoganizing <laughs> the uh, assembly table or the lasers on the assembly table. Right, so let's go down and have a look at this first of all now. What I was trying to do is I was trying to find a way, and here I've got a view, I've got a, a cell workbench here. And the reason for that is I think in here I've got some bits and pieces just have good. And I've got to make sure I don't have the repair talisman on me as well when I'm doing this, because if you do, it can be quite painful. So in here I've got some view cells, so let's have a look. And I've labeled these view cells, so this is a view cell all, so that will show you all of the items and here I've got basically broken armor and everything has to be broken less than 25% so in this case I'm not actually exactly sure but everything here should be broken less than 25% it's actually quite a dangerous process doing that you have to go outside and get bashed up <laughs> by some mobs to actually break the armor a bit and if you're not careful it breaks it completely and you lose the armor altogether you have to start again so this one here is basically set to a fuzzy match comparison any let's have a look at the next one this one's all broken items so it won't show you any complete items in here so here i've got a split damage at 50 percent and everything's broken the next one here is i've got unbroken so anything that's not broken is in here and split damage at 99 percent i think that should be working and this one here wasn't much use it was actually the other way around so I've got split damage at 25% for unbroken stuff so what we can actually do now is we can actually put these into here and see what we get so for example if I put this one here which is let's start with this one all of them you see all these items in here like this actually none of those are unbroken let's just take out a couple of these here let's take out this one now let's take out two, some of these here I think three will do I have to do it last down there because it's try again let's come back let's just quickly repair that in my personal crafting space so that's now complete we can put that back in here and it should still be visible because it's, it's part of the all criteria where we've gone to I've not got the right one. All. Let's have a look for chest plates. Nope, what's it called? Tunic. Oh, that's a bit strange. That should be showing me those. But it, I don't even see it. Ah! Yes. The reason I'm not seeing that is because I've got an export on this one here, which exports everything that's unbroken. 
So on this one here, I've got the a fuzzy t a fuzzy cell with basically split damage at 99%. So everything that's less than 99, more than 99% is okay. Which is basically everything that's complete. That's why I didn't see those. Right now, so every, actually, I'm a bit unfortunate because everything in here is actually then broken. We could put this back into here like this, so we can see this one is everything. Let's have a look at this one. This is all the unbroken items, which is none. And here we see all the broken items. So that's how we do it. So what I then got is here, on these chests here, I've got a, a view. So this one I'm doing basically leather pants or complete leather punks, but and there is a fuzzy match on these, which is set to any fuzzy, any fuzzy. But it has a lower priority, so that the I think it's a lower priority. In fact, you can't set it, can you? And this one has also has funny, and it's also set to any comparison. Okay, I think everything was coming out. But why is it come out in here? Because this one has a higher priority, I think, 100. So everything got pulled into here first before they got exported out. And then this one here, I've got basically everything that's broken. So everything that's broken should come into here, because that's split at 50%, like the view cell. So like that. So you get everything broken in here, like that. And these were just basically to remove the items out of the system as much as possible. So with these, I've got them split up. Now, in here, I've got an export on those. So basically, just be export everything or extract everything. And in here, I've basically got, click on this one, I've got just inserting any form of leather helmets because the I'm ignoring the metadata, which is the which is what determines damage. But unfortunately, the crafters from Ender.io don't work. You see, you can see basically here it's not, it's just putting them in, but it's not actually giving me a, a recipe here to actually mend them. So that's not much use. So let's remove this for a start. Like that. And we can get for a much cheaper version of that anyway. Let's put this away in here. And let's just use the auto workbench from BC Factory. Now the recipe for these is really cheap. It's basically two gears around a crafting frame. Uh, stone gears, which is basically four bits of cobblestone around a wooden gear, which is four sticks. So it's two pieces of wood will make two gears and four stone. No big deal. Now we can put this down in here like this. Did I get those two armor tunics? No, I got one, but that'll do fine. So in here, you can then right click this one and you can set up this as two recipes like this, like that, and that'll make this one. So it will make a leather cap in this case. And it's actually put them all in here, as you can see. And then that'll come out here. So we then need to, need to import this back into the system. So let's do that. So I reckon that what I want to do is this chest here is an importing chest. So what I'll do as I'll set this now mode to import output. If I can reach this, I can't reach it, can I? Let's do this. So we'll have this on input output. So the input screen, as we can see, and it's filtering helmets. And the output, we'll change that to the brand channel and we'll make it always active. Won't do that just yet. Yes, we will make that always active. So let export on the brand channel. And we want the import into here on the brand channel. So let's do that. Actually, I should not activate this just yet. Let's just turn that off to make sure that we're not extracting just yet. So we can right click this and then we can set this one here now to be insert on the brown channel, which is great. And that's a priority, which is of course is only going to be one. So that doesn't matter too much. So then we can activate this like that. Turn it go to Right click that, always active. So we should see into here bits coming into this chest. I hope. Maybe it's already gone through. So I'll look. Oh, yes, it's working its way and it's going out there. Then it gets taken and it'll get put through here. And then that should come back again into the, into the system. So what I can now do is I can repeat this process for all of these different bits and pieces. So let's remove each one of these. Strangely enough, these are actually really expensive. Let's look at crafting. 
Oh, no, I won't try again. It's moved around. So we worked based Z logic controllers, machine chassis, and crafting frames plus iron ingots for now. So difficult, but this one is relatively expensive compared to the other one, which is just a few sticks and stones. So we can put this down like this. Okay, good. So now on this one here, we should have a different filter. Oh, it's always bad standing on cables, isn't it? Right. So this one's doing chest plates. And this is actually an advanced filter. So what I'm doing is basically ignoring metadata. And, we'll, and these then become ignoring NTB data or enchantments or dictionary for the mode. So I don't care about this. So we should get into here chest plates of any description. I think that should work. Am I looking at it? Just double check that again. Yes, that is set to insert. And this one here, that's leggings, and that's boots. So why is it not extracting from here? So look. I want to extract everything. this these ignore metadata ignore NTB data I think that's what we have to do why is it not working probably because it needs maybe it needs a recipe let's take one of these out of here like that come along to here again just double check I'm doing the right one because it's easy not to, to mess that up let's put that into there like that and you see bang straight away they go in so it needs the recipe. Okay, that's fine. And then, of course, those are going to get taken out to there. And these are going to be repopulated in here, I guess. So the next one we need to do is leggings. Let's take a leggings. It doesn't matter whether it's enchanted or not enchanted. Yeah. And again, we'll do the same thing. And, of course, that then gets filled up. And then the last one will be boots, I guess. Let's take those out of there. Do this one. course it's not going to get extracted because I've got I haven't set up the extraction yet so let's do that next you know this is always something I wanted to see if I could figure out how to do it so we want basically input output inserting on the green channel extracting on the brown channel always active it'll do in fact I should have with me conduit probe from there we go so we can press shift on this, I think, and that will copy the settings. Let's just make sure. Shift right click it. Nope, let's just shift right click this one. Nope, I don't have to thought I just did it. Okay. I think I've got the wrong mode. There we are, copy mode here. So holding down the mouse and scrolling, it gives me the copy mode. So I can then should be able to shift right click this one copied settings and now then I can paste that into here like this right click it and right click this one it's been a while since I did that actually Look. sure enough those are going through and those are going through so the only thing that then has got to happen is if things have got to get imported into here which should be the happening so let's have a look now what we got in in the system for leather stuff let's check this one everything's going out this is working away. That should get export. Oh, that's the rule, isn't it? Yes. That's got one to go. Yes, that's fine. One and one. So in the system now, we should be getting rid of these things. What's well, anything in here? Some helmets. Now they've not come into here. Why not? Am I using advanced? Let me double check this one. I'm using advanced on that one. I'm using advanced on all of these actually except for the first one okay so we need to replace this for this one here as well so I think I've got one in my bag yes I have got one left in my bag so we can take that out of here like this we need to get a, 
a helmet of some description. It doesn't matter which one we do. So we'll replace this one here and put this one into it. Then we get the extra features where we can ignore NTB data and metadata. Oh, right, so of course it's, it's taken those. Let's put that now into the filter, of course, because we want to whitelist just those items. There we go. And then we can put this back into this chest here. And it should get taken out and put into here. Fantastic. So now I should have in the system less stuff. And they should be coming back into here. I'm not sure why they're not. Unless there's nothing left in the system. Let's double check that. Let's say which is the one for all. That one. And now I've got stuff in the system. I am not sure why it's not getting pulled into here. Our ah, storage bus, of course, yes. Yeah, it'll only give me new stuff in here. That's the problem. What have I got for the priority 90? So what I've got to basically do is feed the stuff back into the system, which we can do easily enough. If I take, for example, these out of here like that, shift, control shift, click those in there, and then do that like that, they should, with a bit of luck, come back into here. And it looks like they have done. And then that should be coming into here, which it looks like it has done. So then all I need is a way to basically keep this going. What I'm a bit surprised about is that once which have been done already, this chest should be filling up a bit. Unless, unless I've got this split wrong on here. Which could be the case. Let me just double check that. Because at the moment the fizzy one is set to... 50% damage. If we make it say 25% damage, like that. Oh, let's try that again. Get some more. Let's get some more bits out of here. This will do just fine. Put them back into here. I'm not seeing anything coming into here, which is not good. Let's have a look at this. Right, so what I basically do to do this, let's do this on this one. Let's get this view cell in here. And this one is actually not really configured at the moment. It's actually got complete armor, and I don't want the complete armor, I want the broken armor. Let's take the broken armor out of here like that. Put this into the, into the systems we want. I like to do it in the order from head down, as it were. I'll put that back into here. And then in here we can then change the fuzzy the pattern so at the moment it's set to 25 percent damage so let's go and have a look and put that on into here to find out what we've got oops take this one out which is all so we're not seeing anything on the system there okay let's change this then let's make this instead of being 25 percent damage let's make it more 50 percent damage put this into the system now we are seeing stuff coming out in here so I'm expecting to see this of course yeah they won't come out until I've taken them out of the system and fed them in again so let's change this again now make it higher so for instance at the moment it's showing more stuff let's change this to oh, I basically have to go right click it down to 75% put this into here Because what I'm looking for now is the repaired items. I don't see any of the items that we've done are repaired. So let's come back out of this and let's try that on 99%. So here we are, we're seeing these helmets which are actually almost, almost mended. So those have basically been through the process. So all we have to do now is come along here and change this to be 99%. Like that. And that should start to feed more stuff through into the system. Let's have a look if it's feeding any more stuff through. And maybe I have to take the stuff out of here first of all. Let's do that. Put that into the import chest here. Actually into the import 
just take the needle. Oops, don't want to do that. Ah. Oh well, never mind. I can go and rescue those if I can remember what it was. There was one thing I actually wanted to show you, and that was the amount of scrap I got. And it was one stack and 49, I think. Double check it. That was a bit. We had 214 scrap to take this out of here, of course, and look at my view cells. Because that was one of the things I very successfully managed to move back again. And scrap. Not scrap, sorry, you, you matter. 302. That, so put that in there, and we should have left for. I'm trying to do this in my head. 214 minus 391 is about 150, isn't it? Which is two and a half stacks. Which is uh, not actually very much for 2.8 million um, that we did in the first place. Anyway, let's get on with this, carry on with this. So let's take this out of here. These ones actually don't get fed through automatically into that. That was fast. And you see these coming in. That's what I want to see is if I'm getting completed armor. Look, I'm getting completed armor. Some of this is actually becoming back as enchanted. That actually is strange. I'm surprised about that. Let's carry on again and do that again. Let's some more of this enchanted tunics. As you see, they come through there like that. No problem whatsoever. And they should be getting repaired in here like that no problem whatsoever so that's working nicely so the only, the only big problem now of course is to to get everything put into the system so that you actually can take it out again so what i should do with these what i should i do with these actually so i think hmm not 100% sure what I should do with them actually. Let's put that down there. How am I going to feed them back into the system is what I'm trying to think about. That's one way to do it. It's a bit manual. And I, I think they should start to come back through here as you saw that one was then replaced into here. But it might be that they get into here first. Let's get these last ones out of this chip chest and put them into here and we should end up with completed leather tunics and whatever else so what we can do with this now is we can take these with us I just want some boots and take the enchanted boots like that we can go upstairs and we can come over to this and this is actually an area I haven't shown you but I've cleaned it up a lot so what I did here is I basically put um, from the early automation I've come across here and I've put some level emitters. So this one's basically looking for anything less than 100 wood, oak wood. When it's less, then it turns it on and then it activates this. So then that produces more oaks and everything else is imported here. So on one side we've got water coming in. I think that's the, yeah, that's that one. On the top we'll have water coming in. And on the right hand side we've got the the saplings and the phyto grow going on that side and this one is the same but in reverse so here we've got oak coming in at the top and getting woke planks and whatever else exported out of here and then you basically got 512 oak wood which is going to keep this if it's and 512 was allowing me to make um two ender chests in one go so that's what that was number four so if there's less than that, it turns on and it powers this on. As you can see, that the redstone should be high, enabled high. So what I need to do is make another sawmill and then simply put in leather tunics into it. So let's do that. I haven't got a sawmill yet, except for that one I made earlier. Sawmill. Decorable one. I don't think it's a decorable one. I've been using it. It'll be the thermal expansion one. So basically, it's 10, 10, and 1 redstone reception coil. Let's have a look. Got one of those already. Let's have a look. Redstone. 
I need 10 of those, we'll make 20, because it'll take a while, and they get pinched as well. I'll start that one. And then iron was the other one, wasn't it? Take that, split that into three ways, and push those back. I think I might as well craft a couple of these while I'm at it. Because they'll also go across into the machine. So we've got eight. Waiting for the other two. I hope that they are crafting. Crafting 20. Huh. Where have they gone to? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just do it like this. Don't want to wait for the next two. So we've got the materials now to make another sawmill. So they go into the assembly table, so let's get into the assembly table here. And we'll turn off this because I know that when I, at the moment we've got lots of things being in, into these things like this one, like that, because that's making circuits like crazy. And I should also have another one, the redstone reception coil, wherever that's going to be made. Doesn't matter what we're doing here, we'll just put these ten. Tell it to make the sawmill. It's like a similar sawmill. I'll wait for that to come through. It won't take very long, I don't expect. I'm just wondering whether redstone reception call is going to come into let's have a look. <laughs> it's going to come into this one. Uh, typical. But of course that's really nice and fast these days. Hmm. I'm just wondering whether it's worthwhile waiting for this. We'll come back in a few It's going to take a little bit of time to do this, isn't it? So let's go out of here and wait for that to come into the system. It'll come into the system eventually once those are done. So, next thing. Well, I've not got much time for the next thing, but we can do some of it. What I need to do is to decompose bone meal. I got a decompose synthesizer. Yes, I need a synthesizer and a decomposer. And what we're going to do is decompose bone meal. Because what we're going to do is we want. The I think there are different recipes for doing this. I'm just thinking of a good, looking for a good place to do this, where it's got power and power. Well, basically, power goes all underneath here, so it shouldn't be too difficult. I've got power coming out of this chest here, where the open computer bit is. That's good, so we can basically pinch some of this from here, I reckon. Yeah, we've got power here, look. So it might be a good place to put the decomposer here. Need to get the power, some aluminium wire out of here. I'm pulling it up and to cover this up again, like that. And we can put the chemical decomposer. I'm starting to think about it. Actually, you don't need to have it one at the top, do I? Just can put the decomposer straight on it because stuff comes out at the sides of the decomposer. And I'll show you what I'm trying to do in a second. We need some more emmy glass. Let's put this on the top. Oops, try again. With the thing selected that I actually want. So what we're going to do is export bone meal and import titanium and oxygen. So what I'd bet you know, what I need to do then is to get the rest get the thing out of here. Let's go this one now. So I want an import bus and an export bus. So we can put import everything that comes in here. Like that, and the export bus will put on the top. But I do want some way to prevent this from working um, all times. So the easiest way to do that is probably with uh, a level emitter and a toggle bus on the top. So anyway, what I want to do is I want to import bone meal into here. Let's get some bone meal. 
and I think it's one for one. Take a stack of bone meal. I think you're guaranteed one titanium for one bone meal. Let's just check it. So if I put it, oh, I want to turn off the import to start with. Let's just do that. I've got my tool with me. Let's get rid of this one. We don't need that. Let's remove that for the time being. So let's put into here one bone meal. And sure enough, you get one titanium dioxide. Let's put in then, let's put in that, and we should get 63. If, it, if I'm correct, I think I've done this before. So yeah, it's definitely one for one. That's fantastic. So what I want now want to do is I want to decompose this. So I'm going to have to use two decomposers, and I'm going to get titanium and oxygen guaranteed one for one. Okay. And the reason for this is this titanium has actually got a periodic table number of 22. I think this is going to be the easiest way. Oxygen's eight. We'll take those out of there. Actually, I'll just import those into the system because we're actually, the system's actually getting a little bit empty of oxygen because I don't have any way of actually, I could have stopped producing, um, and I probably shouldn't do that actually. I've stopped producing um, compressed cobblestone. And the only reason I've stopped doing compressed cobblestone, I think it's this one extract with signal yes it is like that it's because the system is getting a bit full but i've got a feeling that's going to be a good thing to keep doing because um i reckon it's got a high emc value so i reckon we're going to need some of that anyway so i'll let that run through but the oxygen itself was it's actually gone down quite a lot because i'm using it for different processes So what I was going about this, let's get some hydrogen. Oh, we'll get some hydrogen from the terminal here. I guess that's the best place, isn't it? Because hydrogen is a fairly common component. So if we now take, come along here, it's probably producing phosphorus at the same time, but let's come along here. Let's we take hydrogen here and titanium. It's going to make this vanadium material and that is one of the components we're going to need for th um, for emeralds the other one of it is chromium now chromium's dead easy we've got absolutely stacks and stacks of mag magnesium not so much yet. i'm throwing it away because it's one of the byproducts of decomposing up oh, over here We'll do the same thing here like this. We'll put that into there and that into there. And we get this chromium 24. Now obviously there are different ways to make 23. And 24 is obviously a very good easy one. Now I did, that's why I've had mine come at the beginning of this. So let's have a look in here. So basically emeralds are these two materials mixed together and I think there's one more thing where I'm looking for 20 chromium here's 23 so obviously that we could actually add titanium plus one that was one way scandium was not we don't have that calcium we can make with oxygen no with carbon and magnesium potassium is also something else argon we don't really have so none of these things here are going to be desperately useful sulfur perhaps this potassium's come in like that and you basically need to turn that on those don't get imported the other way of doing it would be to halve things which are like 46 unfortunately 46 is palladium which is also something that we don't get in nature as it were well i don't know how to get it i haven't seen a recipe i think we have to mine chem this stuff well i should look at the the recipe for this and see if there's anything that we can actually decompose yeah nothing and then after that a double that would be 92 now 92 is something else that we can't get 82 is lead so we could do lead and uh, ma well you can't nothing straightforward but 92 was a radioactive one i think it's uranium 
Now uranium we should be able to get, but I think it's disabled because you've got uranium ore from standard uranium ore. But we also get Venus uranium ore. But I don't have any Venus uranium ore after doing all that mining. So I don't think I think it must have been disabled. So we can't get the uranium that way. Which is a shame because we could have then quart quartered that and we've got lots of vanadium that way. But it doesn't exist, so it's not important. So that was that. So let's go now finish off this and do make a quick emerald almost I should have an emerald in my system here I think they're in this chest here yep I should have brought that book with me shouldn't I I want to get this book out of here because I use this one we can easily take this one out of here and put an emerald into this book oh wrong room So that's we'll put the emerald up there we'll take this book out and put this one in here like that take the emerald out again actually let's put that in again so basically it's two chromium two vanadine and this beryl now beryl is it's actually fairly easy to make too i should actually decompose one of these because that's guaranteed but i will do that next time because we can actually come along here now with this book and select emerald and we could put that into here like this And then we have that. So then we've then got the chromium and the vanadium in here. And I've got the bone meal in here. And that would be enough to make half a stack of um, emeralds if I make some beryl, which we shall do next time. Now the next thing, the last thing I want to show you, which one of the things I did is this one, this machine. As you can see, stuff's coming into this like that. And I probably shouldn't be using transparent uh, impulse ducts, but it's good for you to be able to see it. And basically I've set up this room. It's not completely full, but it's making a lot of lava. And as you can see, the, lava, the, the cobblestone comes down through here, gets sorted out into these barrels, and the same on this side. It should come out, and it should round robin. This is on round robin. So it should send it to every single um, crucible in turn. Then that goes up and gets fed up at the outside. So there's plenty of lava going in there. And there's also an entered tank here with lava in it. So that's that. And I haven't finished this. I could add another five or ten crucibles to give us some more. Um, actually, it's a bit strange. I've not seen any bits go over that side. But they must be going over there sometime. Because these are definitely full. So they can't be having nothing. They can't be having nothing out of there, unless of course it's not actually using the lava, and they're all full. Yep, solid volume, so there's no space. So basically it's not using that much lava. So that's that one. Nice, because it basically hides all of that process. And also makes it, and I haven't upgraded this one either, so I have to upgrade this one. If I break it, it breaks everything, and I'm not going to do that for certain. So that's it for this episode a bit longer than i like it to be but i hope you've enjoyed it so until next time when we're going to do these emeralds i'm going to say bye for now